Oh boy, that's gonna be a problem. Uh, cars are spawned inside of the pit road wall. That's not good. Some cars are behind it. That's also not good. Um, hello and welcome to Kentucky Speedway. I can already tell just by that that this race is gonna be a disaster. By that and because of the fact that I can remember running this race and it did not go too well. Um, but, no, it is what it is. Uh, we're here at Kentucky Speedway for the first time ever here in the MG Cup Series. Um, definitely going to have to find a new Kentucky after this. I can't, I couldn't change it then because obviously, you know, with the championship and all that, uh, you can't change tracks. But, we're going to have to deal with it here. So, we're here at Kentucky Speedway for the first time ever here in the MG Cup Series as we have 43 cars lined up and ready a few with damage already because they spawned inside the wall but we get ready to go green here first time ever this track very wide as the green flag is out and this is one unique racetrack because of how wide it is Kurt Busch takes the green flag Heading into turn one for the first time, and he's going to clear Jeff Gordon on the bottom. Kurt Busch just won the last race here in its series um, at Talladega last weekend. And now here out in front from Kentucky, heading down into turns three and four. And I hear tire smoke, and we got a big crash in the back. Multiple cars involved. And one car turned over. That was the 10 of Scott Riggs that got upside down. Racing back to the start-finish line. Jeff Gordon is your leader. And a huge crash in the back. And now under caution. We got trouble under caution. Jamie McMurray up into the outside wall hard with the driver's side door. Another car wrecking. Two more. That's Hermie Sattler and Bobby Labonte. What in the world is going on here? This is a complete disaster already. I mean, what was that? Hermie Sattler clears himself on Robbie Gordon, who wasn't really even turning. The 01 has damage. That's Joe Nemechek. He wrecked with Bobby Labonte under caution. Oh, that's a hard hit. And another one right there. They're stacking up under yellow. Sending each other into the outside wall hard and wrecking, running into each other. So first, we're going to just figure out what just happened here. To, uh, the, uh, Brian Vickers just, what was that? And then Hermie Sattler gets turned right into the door of Bobby Labonte. And then Karma for Robbie Gordon, except it wasn't it wasn't even his fault that Hermie Sattler got wrecked because Sattler chopped his nose. Ricky Craven has roof damage. What in the world? What is going on here? Craven has damage because he spawned inside the wall. Um, I am so confused about everything that just happened. We're gonna go back. We're gonna take a look at everything as we head into turn three. One car that spawned inside of the wall and had heavy damage from it, that's the 40 of Sterling Marlin on the track. Three wide and gets hooked right up into the outside wall, head on, up and up and over Scott Riggs. And then another wreck further down with more cars going into the wall. I believe as they checked up, they started, they started wrecking, right? Yeah, they 22 tried to avoid as they started running into each other. 86, of course, didn't see it in time. Gets door slammed by the 22. Luckily, gets on the brakes so he doesn't run into the back of the 99, who already had damage. Gets spun up into the outside wall, and then here comes Morgan Shepherd and a few other cars. H. A. Henriksen, big hit for Henriksen there. going on here these guys three wide 
they were, they try to go down and avoid it, and they just sandwich each other. And Morgan Shepherd and Derek Cope, all these guys go right into the outside wall and destroy their race cars. The race really hasn't even gotten started yet. So, just absolute chaos here. What in the world? I, I don't even know what to say about all this. I mean, that's just... <laughs> this track is broken. And we're seeing it right here. Because Brian Vickers just, for no reason, right down into the 42. What looked to be intentional from his AI, but really was just the track being broken in it. And the AI not knowing how to try. Look at this. On the front straightaway, they're turning right into the outside wall under caution. I'm not sure what they're doing or where they're going. They're cutting through the grass to get onto the access road. I mean, wow. Talk about chaos here. We're seeing it at Kentucky Speedway. It's not a good sign of how this race is going to go. So we're going to hurry up and get through these pace laps. We're not even going to worry about seeing the drop of the green. We're just going to go. And uh, Jeff Gordon out in front. A few lap cars starting in front of the field. Everyone tries to get to the bottom. They all get stuck behind the lap cars of Greg Biffle and Buckshot Jones. Or, excuse me, the 09. That's uh, Johnny Benson. Alright, through three and four. They're making it through somehow. And we're going to complete a lap under green here at Kentucky. <clears throat> broken racetrack and lap traffic holding up Kevin Harvick and everyone behind him three wide through the middle goes Elliot Sattler um, dropping frames for no reason at all they sort that out pretty quickly Harvick still being stuck behind oh they're checking up on the fresh fresh just like that Rockingham problem I had in the late model race where they were just Kind of tapping the brakes in the straightaway. So that's another problem. Um, not sure really even how to fix that. They're just, I mean, it's just the track being broken. That's all I can say. I think here, with the higher speeds and all that, it's a lot more severe than it was at Rockingham. Side by side for the lead, Jeremy Mayfield took the lead at one point, but now here comes Jeff Gordon back on his in, inside. Side by side, out of turn four, coming to the stripe, it's going to be Gordon taking the lead back here in that Rainbow Warrior machine, that famed paint job that he drove early on in his career. He brought it back for this season here in the MG Cup Series, and now out in front running some very good races here and he's not getting caught up in in just absolute messes caused by the other cars and other AI at tracks that are broken out of turn two get a good flyby I like that about this track but one thing you may notice about this racetrack is very wide a lot wider than a lot of other tracks here on the schedule so it'll be very interesting to see I mean you'd think with a wider track like this drivers will have more room to escape wrecks but since the groove is right down on the bottom and everyone wants to be on the bottom all the time it doesn't really it doesn't really help that much
But here comes Jimmy Johnson. Underneath Jeremy Mayfield. The Hendry cars are very fast here today. Okay, this race. The racing itself isn't half bad, actually. But... With the track being broken, a lot of pre-race stuff kind of overshadows the things that happen during the race. But, this is that time, we gotta take a quick break, so we'll be right back, right after this. Oh, and we're back. And the caution is out an incident on the back straightaway where I believe it was Kyle Petty yes it was Kyle Petty something happened to that car and it started smoking and he was slowing down he was trying to get out the way and then they started splitting them and then the 09 runs into the back of them and they all start stacking up here on the back straightaway everyone comes to a stop I mean the 77 and Brendan gone is stopped and everyone behind have to slam on the brakes. They do a good job at stopping there. I'll tell you that. But that is going to have to bring out the caution. So your second caution of the day. It's brought out by Kyle Petty. And uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Green flag is back out. We're racing once again. Jimmy Johnson fell back back behind a lot of lap cars Kurt Helmer or excuse me Brad Teague in the 75 somehow is your leader I guess he stayed out under this last caution when everyone else pitted and he's gonna go down to the inside and block the bottom he's trying to lead a lap here in the MG Cup Series Brad Teague under green trying to lead a lap and out of turn four he's gonna succeed in doing so Brad Teague just led a green flag lap. Derek Cope was second on the, on the, at the time of the restart with heavy damage. I'm not sure what's going on here. It's absolute chaos up, out in front. The field's getting stacked up. Something tells me we'll see a wreck soon. Brad Teague finally gets past, or Jimmy Johnson finally gets past Brad Teague. And a big crash further back. Jamie McMurray and a few others collected Elliot Sattler down pit road and my camera keeps trying to focus on that and uh, whoops hold on um, I'm not even sure what lap we were on but I believe it's right here no but we have a big accident on the front straightaway out of turn four. And if I could just find it, here it is. Yeah, what in the world just happened here? I believe uh, lap traffic had a lot to do with that. Oh, yeah, lap traffic definitely had a lot to do with that. Um, Drivers, I think McMurray tried to get to the inside of Ryan Newman. Newman was trying to get to the inside of Jeremy Mayfield. Nobody lifted. And they just kind of collided there. Newman gets turned by McMurray. And they go up the racetrack. And then behind them, trying to check up, Derek Cope gets hooked up into Mark Martin by... Brian Vickers and a pretty big hit there. Surprised he was able to straighten it out as well as he did. And a few hard hits late for Ryan Newman as he got plowed by Hermie Sattler and uh, the 01 of Joe Nemechek. And then driving away from it, up and over goes Brendan Gaughan because the AI of him and Robbie Gordon just got stuck together and went into the wall in a way to just flip to 77 over I mean never seen anything like that um, the worst is gonna act like that last part never happened because that was kind of funny and kind of stupid at the same time 
Uh, anyway, Green Flag is back out. This race has been a complete disaster. But, you know, I like to give tracks a chance. And I'm not gonna, I'm not like most NASCAR fans where after they go there for the first time and the race isn't as good as, you know, as it could have been or isn't good at all, then I immediately hate on it and say never to race there again. I'm not one of those people. Uh, after the Iowa, the uh, Knoxville Iowa race, I was I was like you know that could have that was that was entertaining for sure. Could have been a lot better, but it was entertaining. I think if we give them another chance next season to turn it around, that would be pretty fair. But a lot of fans said they did not want to see it on the schedule again. So it'll be interesting to see in the future how that goes on. No one, uh, NASCAR, they're probably going to try it anyway. They don't let one bad race ruin everything for them. So they'll, they'll probably try it again next season. Hopefully they do. I don't want to let one bad race kind of ruin everything. But Jimmy Johnson driving away. We're in the rest of the field. Side by side for second. That's the two of Rusty Wallace. He's going to the inside of the 20 of Tony Stewart. And he clears him. So now Wallace to the second position. Can he possibly run down Jimmy Johnson? Look at Chris Smack out on the track with heavy damage. No front or rear end to that car. He's just kind of on the track. Locking laps and trying to get some positions and we're hearing on the radio from that 86 that it's getting hot in there there's no uh, air flow coming through the, the helmet it's not getting any air so might have to park it soon this is, uh, it's this, yeah, this is the second time this season um, we've heard something like that from the 86 driver, I believe. Might not be, I'm not sure, but, yeah, Texas, just a few weeks ago, we heard that from the 86 driver. So, it's gonna be looked at in the future, unless these cars get damaged, some things happen and they're not able to get air to the driver I mean, it's not that much of a difference it's only about maybe five degrees cooler but still better than nothing so it's definitely going to be a problem i mean it's 140 degrees inside these cars so that that's for sure going to be an issue but anyways jeff gordon and bobby labani Getting ready to battle it out here, it seems. Gordon was pretty dominant early on, but it's kind of fallen back. His teammate, Jimmy Johnson, has taken over. And this is that point where we have to take another break. So I'll be right back after this. And we're back here from Kentucky Speedway. Probably skipped way too many laps, but let's face it, this race hasn't been the best. And I'm ready to delete this track from the game and look for a better Kentucky. But I'll tell you what, visually this Kentucky looks great. Here goes Rusty Wallace to the inside of Kurt Busch. Kurt's gonna check up on the front stretch, I believe, because, you know, track broken. But, actually he didn't really check up too much. Hop right back down to the bottom. Lap traffic, they're going to avoid him with ease. And he's staying in the draft of that two car, trying to work his way back up there. Runs it a little bit lower through three and four. Um, Rusty Wallace got back under the gas quicker though. So, going to drive away down the front straight away. A little bit of a check up for no reason down the front stretch, but not too big of a deal. I mean, they both checked up. 
Jimmy Johnson, your leader, catches some lap traffic. Some more lap traffic, I should say. Derek Cope in the 50. Brad Teague, Brad Teague led that lap. I'm pretty sure Kirk Shelmerdine had a smile on his face to see his team out in front, even if it may have just been for a lap due to a pit call. Still pretty nice to see. A small team owned by Kirk Shelmerdine, who has raced a few races here this season but owns the team and tries to get a few other drivers in there as well as we've seen Brad Teague and Ted Christopher drive that car I believe this is Teague's first or second start this season I don't really remember that well right now but these two still going at it Kurt Busch Rusty Wallace back to the inside of that 97 Kurt Busch drove it in deep up top gonna try to make it stick off of turn two here side by side and Kurt Busch with the run down the back straight away heading into turn three still side by side um, Rusty Wallace gonna clear him no Kurt Busch with the runoff on the high side Kurt checks up because of the track being broken and drives it back into one. Kurt, uh, Rusty Wallace didn't get all the way down to the white line that time. That might help Kurt a little bit, but here comes Brad Teague right in the racing line. Nowhere for these two to go. He's trying to stay out of the way. Bush falling back. Looks like that's the end of that battle. So I'm gonna go back a little bit. Side by side, or at least for a second they they were side by side. It's a 20 in the 88. Dale Jarrett and Tony Stewart. Stewart in the 20. Jarrett in the 88. Fighting for the position here off of turn four. Stewart gets to the inside with a big run out of turn four and. Dale Jarrett going to fall back and try to get back down into one here. He's got a good run through turns one and two. Couldn't carry the momentum off of turn two, but staying in the draft of the 20, going to try to work its way back up there. Remember, here with the draft, you can easily run someone back down if they pass you. And as long as you stay in the draft. And don't fall too far back. You can easily get back up there. But now Stewart catching Jeff Gordon. These two Indiana kids. Jeff Gordon from California moved to Indiana to get his racing career started. So the two Indiana kids trying to uh, about to duke it out for fifth place or fourth place. Excuse me.
side by side down the front straightaway. Jeff Gordon checks up because the track's broken. And uh, whoa, look at this! Battle for second is back on. Rusty Wallace got held up by some lap traffic. That's the 16 of Greg Biffle, a teammate to Kurt Busch. And now here comes Kurt Busch right back to the inside. A possible pick and roll type deal. Heading down into turn three. Rusty Wallace is going to let the 97 by. Going to try to get back in line here through one and two. Kurt Busch didn't get all the way down to the, the white line. And here comes Rusty off of turn two. Looking to the inside. Can't get there. He pulled out of the draft. So he had no help down the front stretch. Was hoping to do it off of pure horsepower there. But just couldn't get the a good enough exit. Got a good exit to stay with him. But just not a good enough exit to get the run down the front stretch. And stay on this inside. Or down the back stretch I should say. So this battle for second heating up. But Jimmy Johnson way ahead. Seems to have already wrapped this one up. Counting the money and getting ready to dust off a, a, a or, or clear out a spot in his trophy case and dust off some of the older ones that he he got from his uh, other wins from last season and earlier this season. Push. Unable to hold off Rusty Wallace in the turn three as Rusty gets back to the inside. And here comes Kurt. Now in the front straight away. And that could have been bad if Rusty kept going down. He would have cleared himself and put them both in the wall, but luckily he didn't go all the way down to the bottom. Kurt Bush takes the spot. laps to go here in Kentucky Speedway so aside from the start shenanigans I'd say this race really hasn't been quite bad I mean the first 30 laps were absolute chaos but once they calmed it down a bit and got spread out I mean it's not really been too bad I have a few battles here and there we got lap traffic right here. It hasn't been that bad. So, we'll see. This might be something special next season. And if I get a good enough Kentucky, I might bring the, the uh, other package here with the crazy pack racing. But, obviously I'll have to test to see if they can handle it first. I'm not just going to throw them onto the track because last time I did that I just came up with a package on the spot and threw them out there that was like I believe Martinsville and Bristol last season and those races weren't really the best I mean Bristol saw only four cars or three cars finish on the lead lap uh, the night Bristol not day Bristol day Bristol was really good actually uh, night the, the night race saw only three cars finish on the lead lap and all three of them had damage Martinsville the first race it was okay it wasn't really the best the second race was an absolute absolute snooze fest and Kenny Wallace somehow managed to get upside down so I'm gonna have to do some tests with this track or not this track but like if I find another Kentucky in the future, I have to do some test races as you see Rusty Wallace continue to get held up by lap traffic. Kurt Busch is gone. So it looks to have uh, looks to have second place in the bag here. Rusty Wallace finally gets by and these two still battling for fourth place here. Tony Stewart and Jeff Gordon still going at it, the Indiana kids. 
side by side all the way from the front stretch down the back stretch and in the three Stewart not giving up quite yet now gets cleared by the 24 and here comes Dale Jarrett with a run on the 20 these three have been going at it for the last I'd say 20 laps or so ever since the restart really these three have just been going at it it's a three way battle for fourth as we're slowly closing in on the end of this race Leader Jimmy Johnson just checked out early on in this run and never looked back. Sporting a mostly silver scheme for Hendrick Motorsports and their special thing this season. I believe it's the 20-year anniversary, but I'm not sure. I forgot so many special schemes this season. I don't even remember all of them. But yeah, sporting some special colors for the boss on the 48 this season. And absolutely dominating here at Kentucky. He's also won at Bristol Dirt. comes to 22 or excuse me 12 laps to go so we go back to the battle for fifth never or fourth never mind that is uh that battle ended quickly these guys are all spread out now, but I think Tony Stewart might run them down a little bit. We're going to go on board with that 20, see if he gains anything. Out of turn four, and down the front stretch. I think he's a little bit too far back for draft as they check up on the front stretch for no apparent reason. But through the corners, I think he's getting them a little bit here. And there. I think he's running them down slowly so we'll see if this battle comes anything as we have more lap traffic in front of Jeff Gordon here with 10 laps to go Too much time to the 20. Rusty Wallace working his way through lap traffic. Kurt Busch cruising his way to a second place finish. And Jimmy Johnson in his own zip code here making his way through three and four or in the three and four. Now making his way through three and four. Getting ready to collect another win here in the MG Cup Series. Kurt Busch to the inside of the lap cars on the back straightaway. with three seconds separating him and Rusty Wallace. But Jimmy Johnson out in front.
And um, I guess a little bit of news for next season, the Daytona Road Course will not be back on the schedule for next season because of that little lip on the track there that the drivers kept hitting. And it was causing massive accidents. So I just can't afford to... I tried to fix it. I can't. So it's really, I just I have no choice but to take it off the schedule. But we'll be going to the Homestead Road Course instead, and hopefully that will be good. I have to do a little bit a little bit of testing with the uh, track. I'll be using this season's cars because why not but the testing will be for the race next season if I want to put it on the schedule for next season or not and either way I still probably will because I want the second race of the season to be a road course in Florida so shoot might as well I'm not putting Sebring on the schedule so I might as well put the home sort homestead road course in this, on the schedule and maybe in the future, the Daytona Road Course will be back. But as of right now, no, it's not working. But two lap or three laps to go for Jimmy Johnson. As he casually drives his way through the lap traffic. So we go on board with that 48 in the three and four. Two to go this time by. Down the front stretch. That's the 38 of Elliott Sattler in front of him. Checks up a little bit. Sattler drives it on down to the bottom as if the leader isn't right behind him. And he's gonna hold him up a bit through one and two. Jimmy Johnson, very patient, no big deal. Nothing to gain or lose from this. Checks up in case Mark uh, Michael Waltrip tried to go low. Now, out of turn four, coming to the white flag this time by. One more time around for Jimmy Johnson here. Through one and two for the final time. Jimmy Johnson. What happened to Kurt, uh, Rusty Wallace? Rusty Wallace. Seems to have pitted. He did pit. Wasn't able to make it to the end. And out of turn four, Jimmy Johnson is going to win once again here in the MG Cup Series at Kentucky in the inaugural event and an absolute disaster of an event. But he wins the Quaker State 400. don't even know really what to say about this that was it started off chaotic was good towards the middle and at the end it was an absolute snooze fest so I mean shoot I really don't know what to say so that's gonna do it for this one hope you guys enjoyed um, cause I'd say overall that was a pretty good race or not overall but towards the middle and end after we got through the uh, shenanigans that was a pretty good race so yeah as I said hope you guys enjoyed if you did hit the like button subscribe hope to see you guys next race and until then peace